One of the hardest things to understand at the beginning of using a total station is coordinate systems, site coordinate plans, and your layout drawing plans. And this presentation is going to review this information. Every city has their own set of control points, city-specific control points. In this example, I have a picture of Highland Village, Texas, and certain control points set throughout their city. And you can see they're set in different locations and as they're, they're basically monuments set throughout their city. They use these to lay out the highway system and to lay out commercial and different buildings throughout the city. These are all representations of different parts of their city grid that surveyors use to establish property lines, roads, and the like. The coordinates that are representing the city grids are represented as monuments of sorts that are clearly staked and very easy to find that can be used by surveyors or layout crews that are working around them. They have surface coordinates and grid coordinates. It's a surveying term, but for intensive purposes of this presentation, just know that there are very similar coordinates between the two, but essentially the idea is the coordinates, the northern and the eastern coordinate and the elevation coordinates, show where the city control points are in real world coordinate terms. You see that they have a northern, eastern, and elevation value, as well as a latitude and longitude value. So if we take these coordinates and think about a job site, a lot of times job sites certainly have a civil drawing associated with it. The reason you have a civil drawing, well, one of the reasons you have a civil drawing is because it shows how the site the full property site looks and it shows where certain piping and electrical conduits tie into the city, which are all based on the city coordinate system. So a lot of times your civil drawings look fairly large and they're usually at the map plan north view as well. So here's, a, here's an example. And for this example, the surveyor has several control points listed as part of the plan controls and they're located around here as triangles on the plan. And so in this instance, this is the plan that they were given by the drafter. Here's all the control points and everything lines up perfectly because everything was made to the city site coordinate plan. The city had a set of grids like over here, had a set of control points and the surveyor simply took those control points, set up the property and around the property placed a bunch of control points at certain coordinates in relation to the city grid. They're all marked clearly out, and they're labeled appropriately for job site contractors, especially the general contractor, to use going forward. Now, why is this important for a total station user? Well, a lot of times, total station users are not given the civil drawings. Sometimes they are. Sometimes you do lay out what's on the civil plan. But most of the time, you're given a layout plan, which doesn't look nearly as intricate or as detailed or as big as a civil plan. They typically are simple floors or simple sections of drawings that you need to lay out, such as this. Here's a spherical shape that represents a concrete curve that needs to be laid out in this format. And this is represented on the civil plan in this location. This is where it's supposed to be going, right here, this little spherical area. If you notice, however, it's obviously oriented a little bit differently. It's oriented in such a way that it's an easy thing for a drafter to draft and look at it to take dimensions off of. So the question is, do the control points that you are given for the site plan, which are usually aligned to the civil drawing, are these going to match the layout plan? And most of the time the answer is no. Layout plans that are designed in AutoCAD and Revit that are not associated with the civil plan, as in the civil plan was designed one way for civil purposes, and now you have the layout of the job that is designed another way, usually the layout plans are oriented a little bit differently for convenience for the drafter's sake. And so usually the original coordinates that are associated with the city do not line up perfectly to the orientation of the layout plans. These are usually only designed for the civil plans. And you can see that here. This layout plan is supposed to be going right here in this location. Here's the civil drawing with our control points. And here's the layout drawing as it was designed in AutoCAD. You can see that this one has map coordinates north, south, e west, and east. And over here, this is plan north, south, west, and east, right? They're obviously oriented slightly differently for convenience sake. One 
designed for civil applications only, so they have to be designed and oriented to the city. The other designed a little bit more simple, so you can draft a little bit easier, and then when you take it to the field, especially have this on paper plans, it's easier to look at. That's the design behind it. So of course, these control points, as they stand currently, do not align up with this specific layout plan. To further emphasize the point about layout drawings, you can see that layout drawings, when they're designed in AutoCAD, they are usually laid out and drawn in a way that's simple to read and use. Just as we always try to make things simpler for ourselves if we can, when you're drafting a project or if you're trying to find dimensions on a project, you like to see things in a way that's easier to read. And in this case, taking your plan and putting it in plan north, south, east, and west view makes more sense, especially when you're working with it on paper or even on a total station. So you can see here, this looks they make these look a lot simpler and easier to read because they're in plan north, south, east, west, rather than site. Grids are usually located on there as well that represent the grids of the job site that the surveyor could lay out. Over here you have, again, north, south, east, west plan view. This one's a little bit more intricate because it has a diagonal grid within there, but still it keeps that, maintains that north, south, east, west plan view. And over here, a concrete job for foundations as well. North, south, east, west, plan view. These are obviously not the way that they're oriented in true map north, south, east, west coordinates. They'd be oriented slightly differently to represent exactly where true north or east or south or west would be. So if we take another look at what, what we saw before, but in, in, in a different light, you have the civil plan that represents the true map north, south, east, and west view of the site. And then typically, the layout plan, the layout portion, is brought over in a plan north, south, east, west view, and therefore is on a different coordinate. The coordinate system changed. The orientation changed, so the coordinate system changed as well. So these control points you see over here, CP1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all these control points are now not going to line up to this plan in this set orientation. This plan has to be or arranged like this orientation in order, in order for it to align with these control points. So how can you check if your control points that you've been given do indeed align with your layout drawing? So if you're given control points from the surveyor or the GC and they tell you that those are the control points, what's a quick way you can check to see if they actually will align to your layout plan? Because there is a chance that it could line up. Maybe they did give you the correct points. Well, one thing you can do is just to simply import them. You have your layout plan and you have your control points. Import them and see if they line up to where control points typically should be, which are usually on the outskirts of the job or sometimes they're monuments within the job as well. The way you read a point file is by simply opening up the point file in either Excel or Notepad, and you'll be able to see how they're organized. You have the columns that represent one of the coordinates. Usually they start with the northern coordinate and then an eastern coordinate. Sometimes they start with the eastern coordinate first. Either way, they're going to represent the coordinates, and it's also going to represent the point names on the left side. You're going to want to look at these points to see if they actually are going to fall on the same coordinate system as your plan. You can either import them, or sometimes if you know what the coordinate plan should be, you can look at the numbers and determine it that way. Typically speaking, a good rule of thumb is if you've been given points that are within a few hundred feet of zero, zero, you can see here that I have about 235 feet to the left of zero, and my maximum to the right, it looks like it's gonna be 60 feet or so to the right of zero. When you're within this, short range to a zero zero coordinate you most likely are working with plan coordinate values which are what you're going to want to use if you're using values that are significantly higher you're most likely working with points that are associated with site coordinates and let me give you another example just to review remember these are the ones we started out with you can see how high they are as values of feet and that's because they're using coordinates associated with the city which obviously can get really, really high as you have much further distances when you're talking about a large city. But when you're talking about just a small site plan, the architect has a little bit more room to customize it for himself, and therefore they're, they're able to keep their points closer to zero, zero for convenience. So if you're wondering if your points that you've been given align to your layout plan, simply import them in the way that the CSV is asking you to import them, so northern, eastern, height, or however they're arranged. And if they line up, great. If they don't, then you need to talk to the surveyor or the GC to see what's going on or what control points they gave you to see if they were site-based or map-based coordinates rather than your layout plan coordinates. But let's get into what you should do if you are given control points that simply don't line up. 
what are some options that you have? Option one would be to simply disregard the points you've been given and rely on the grids that you have on your plan. Remember, the grids are laid out based off of those site coordinates by the surveyor, and you can simply take your grid system and make control points on the grids, which basically are site control points. Simply put your control points at the center of in intersections or maybe a slight offset and just make sure they're marked clearly on the plan. And now you can use the grids or an offset of these grids as your new control points. No need to use the ones that were given to you. Just make sure that the grid lines are marked out correctly in the field. And now the grid can become your new control points. And after you station with the total station a few times, go ahead and make your own control points going forward. Another option is to ask a drafting service to align your layout plan to the civil or to the site coordinate plan or whatever you're using. You can take the layout plan and have them drag it over and align it accurately to the civil plan. There's a little bit that's left unsaid here. You do need to make sure that there's points or objects in both drawings that represent the alignment points to align them. Talk to a drafting service about that. They can help you out. But it is possible to align a layout plan to a civil plan as long as you have connecting points on both sides that indicate where they need to be aligned at. And finally, your third option is if the control points you were given aren't working and there's no way to align it, there is an option to still go out there and make your own control points manually. And we can spend a lot of time on this, but to keep it simple, you want to make sure that when you're out there on the site, if you need to manually lay out a couple of points first to set up some points in their correct location on the digital file, you can do that and then use those points as control points. Just make sure they're accurate. So for instance, in this drawing where we're hanging out lights, you can, for instance, lay out this light up here manually first, come down here and lay out the one down here manually. Now you have two points, one over here, one over here, and perhaps you lay out a third. And once you know that all three of those lights are laid out manually, you can then convert those into control points as well, set your station up, and lay out the rest of your drawing. It's a little bit creative. There's Again, there's a lot remaining to be said here, but essentially you're going to have to lay out or find something that is laid out in the field that's also in your digital plan, and then you could use that as a control. And that takes a little bit of work, but uh, when you're in construction, you have to be creative. So that's your third and final option. Now, what I'd also suggest is that throughout all of this, you're working with your GC and surveyor for help. Don't go at this alone. Make sure you're asking questions. Show them your findings of what you're struggling with, and they can surely help you. But I hope this presentation helped you understand that there are essentially two sets of points and grid systems you're working with. The first one is site or map-based coordinates that are associated with city coordinates, and the second is your layout plan which could be different altogether because the layout plan is designed in AutoCAD for convenience and simplicity, which is most likely in a different set of coordinates than your site. I hope this helped. Please leave any questions in the comments.